You want a piece of me, boy? Nuclear launch detected. Welcome back, everybody, to Nation War Season 4. I was a little, I'm a little bit off guard there. Of course, we are back. We've got so much StarCraft today. I'm losing my mind. It's pretty sick. Best of seven that you guys just casted. Oh, yeah. The, the fourth verse, all kill from my boy Kalazur. We've played a little bit of a prediction game as well. It's not been on screen yet, but we filled in all those results. 4-3 Brazil. You did say that. Yeah. Ah, what a boss. I'm proud of myself. Hopefully you guys are enjoying all the Nation Wars action. As you guys could see, we decided to have another match that was actually not planned to be on the mainstream. But oh, gaming is like, well, you know, with this schedule, we're actually going to be done in eight and a half hours. And that's <laughs> not a real work day. In France, we work at least 11. So <laughs> let's do Chile versus Finland. Uh, I said, why not? It should be a fun one. I'm not that familiar anymore with the players from Chile. Obviously, we all know Killer. Killer is like a real old school name. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I looked at the lineup is like mm, it's going to be tough for them I think I think the reasoning the, the reasoning behind it is that uh, Finland did amazingly well during Nation Wars 3 and it was actually kind of sad to not see them uh, going through those qualifiers I guess mm -hmm. that's one of the that's one of the main issues that we had with it so we were considering adding a game and after 6pm that was the time we were supposed to uh, you know deliver and have a decision about that so we finally uh, thought that we would show uh, Finland because once again in Nation Wars 3 one of the you know up and coming nations that we didn't insist paid to do so well. True. I mean, back then, I think Serol was on fire. Oh, I still think was. that's the best Serol that we've perhaps ever seen, even though Serol had once or twice a very good run within a WCS. But I think Serol nationwide back then, that was pretty much the best Serol we've ever seen. Some great games against Showtime. I still remember on that, uh, what was that four-player map that was kind of... The uh, green one? Was, no, again, no, no, this one, one was the, the gray one. Um, damn it. It was... It was yeah, doesn't matter. It was the like send one. You mean? Yeah, like it's like more sendy, right? It's a little bit I like. I remember the names for it. You know. Yeah, it was just very hard to secure a fourth base as a protoss player. But Saro and Showtime back then and a couple of great oh yeah, games. yeah, he was playing a lot of Zerglings and he would couldn't yeah. counter attack all the time. No, 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 that's no. not Antigua Shipyard. No, I couldn't remember the name of those yeah. maps. Like if my life depended on it, like it's so I bad. Know. The other day I was thinking about ago. all the BlizzCon maps and I remember all the games of the maps, but I have no idea about the the <laughs> actual map names. Not the last BlizzCon, obviously, but the one before. Yeah, yeah. It Anyway, it should be fun. Let's take a look at who's going to be our first players. As soon as we have that information, obviously, we'll let you know. Obviously, let us know as well who you guys think is going to win. Hashtag Finwin, I assume? Yeah. Finwin and, and hashtag uh, CHI win. Chi? Uh, was it CHI? We, yeah, we, we, we talked about it just before. CHL. See, I knew there was something going on. It's, a, it's the actual way of like way when you when you I, I think during the World Cup I think Chile is uh, written like this. No, no, you don't believe? I I definitely know that Denmark is not written as DNK in the World Cup. It's definitely DN. Whoa, you, you're uh. gonna have to have a couple of uh, discussion uh. with the guys back there. It's all good. Th those are the ones who are making the calls right now for uh, yeah for the hashtag to use. So don't hesitate. Just vote for the team you think you think is gonna make it to the round of 16. But already some uh, so many games are actually uh, been played today and uh, something that happened on the B stream was the reverse all kill mm -hmm. from Rainer between uh, uh, in Italy versus uh, China yep what a great result for uh, yeah. the younger. Yeah, I know. I didn't see all of it, but we all know how good Reynar is, right? Reynar was adorable at Remake Valencia. That was uh, one of the most awesome, at the same time, not uncomfortable, but weird moments for me where I was interviewing somebody that was like less than twice my age. Oh, you know, yeah. I was like, uh, you know, how do I talk against somebody that's this young? Like, it's been a while, but it was awesome. Reynar such a talented StarCraft II player, so it's really cool to see him again perform well. And I know a lot of people are very excited to see Reynar and it in Nation War Season 4. Yeah, I'm happy to see them uh, going through uh, going through the qualifiers. It's actually kind of sad for China too, who's always like produced yeah. some, uh, great, some great games and great players. And even last year when we had uh, the quarterfinals between Korea and China, that was like a high peak of, uh, of the quarterfinals between those two teams. Mm -hmm. And a lot of viewers on the Chinese team, uh, uh, even uh, Chinese people getting on Twitter to send us some yeah. tweets that was like just just great in general. But having, uh, having Raynor in the round of 16 is also kind of cool uh, that was a uh, you know 
probably a, a soon-to-be bracket, but uh, that wasn't the right time to show it, so no problem whatsoever. <laughs> um, it had a lot of lols on it. That's what yeah, I saw. I was like uh, filling out, uh, you know, the teams like lol, 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 lol. That's, yeah, that's well, I'm glad yeah. that at least somebody's having a lot of fun in the back. <laughs> now, I think we're all having a lot of fun. Hopefully, we can get this match started soon as we still have two more best of sevens after this. Mm -hmm. I think one of them is going to be a little predictable. I mean, France against Vietnam. I think it's safe to say that France is a very big favorite in that one. But what I know a lot of people, I think Harsten tweeted about it as well, and I think a lot of people in general have been waiting for, is the last match of the day on the mainstream USA versus the UK. And oh, yeah. I think that's going to be uh, an absolute cracker. Oh, wow, we're just going to jump into the first match immediately. Actually, Why yeah. the hell not? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, in the top left, uh, it is the Finnish player we all know and love. A really, really aggressive Protoss player for Finland, then. It is Welmu. Well, we're a real veteran. He's been around for a while over here in the right bottom side. We're looking in the main base of our Chilean Protoss player. He is a darkness, and he has, uh, you know, the uh, how would you call that actually? The spinning, uh, the spinning image next to his nexus is actually the, the German Kof? Protoss player. Oh, icon. it's Showtime! Showtime! Look at it! You know, Showtime uses great. Showtime uses nurture, I believe. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of trolling going yeah. on. Like, where <laughs> actually, every single player that was at BlizzCon doesn't use his own icon, but somebody else's. I would always use my own icon. Oh, I definitely really? love myself that much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, man. If your face is in the game like that, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it at all. All right, so it's going to be an adept opening for Wellamo. So Wellamo is going to scout. He's going to see that these three pylons are relatively well placed. But there is always an opening against three pylons, unless there is some really sick sim city going on. Wellmo actually, Wellmo's base is perfect. But I think on the left side of the top assimilator, there's an opening for the adepts to get a couple of hits off, and then you can easily run outside of range and maybe shade into the back. Wow, it's actually a quadruple adept opening. Okay. That's a lot. Like yeah. Wellmo going all out with aggression, with potential aggression with those four adepts. And. Uh, Maybe just uh, trying to uh, take darkness by surprise. Like you, you anticipate two adepts, and I guess if you localize, like if you know where those two first adepts are, mm -hmm. you don't anticipate the third and fourth adept. So uh, we we might see coming in into play, and uh, well, we're gonna throw down the nexus just after that. No technology though, like just one sentry. Very fast robotics facility. So let's see how much damage Wilmo will be able to do. I mean, sometimes you can find one Stalker in the middle of the map and four Adepts will obviously absolutely wreck one Stalker. Even against two Stalkers, these four Adepts will actually be able to do quite well. They're going to be able to push out quite a bit of damage. He's going to cancel the Shades. The Stalker is a little bit too fast. But now the other Stalker is in a little bit of trouble. So far, good control by Darkness. Yes, he took a lot of damage, but not that much he could have done about it. However, oh. this Stalker is in a lot of trouble right now and is going to fall. I like... No! What? No! Cast the uh, curse. I thought Wellmu was a merciful god, but no, he gets his target and is actually going to go shade into the main, trying to get some information look at the adept. for himself. He Can cancelled. Oh, okay, he cancelled the shades once again, but he probably confirmed that it was a robo transition from uh, the Chilean player. Yeah, he sees the robo right now. He sees a couple of sentries just in That's the back too, and it's actually going to shade into the main. Yep. As you can see, he can easily run out of range of this Photon Overcharge. He's going to shade away again. Should not take too much damage. Might lose one more Adept. Yeah, I guess one more will fall. But I still think that's all right. He got a decent scout off, traded two Adepts for one Stalker. And he knows what's going on in the main base. So I really don't mind it at all for Welmo. Cool opening. Uh, quad Adept. I have seen it a couple of times. But yeah, I can see this being pretty good with the way that the Stalker openings play off against the first two adept openings in general. Ooh, a couple of probes are following another probe, by the way. You oh saw yeah. that in the main base? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a costly mistake. That's yeah, three? Two, two probes. Yeah, sure. Two probes following the other one, so losing a lot of uh, minerals in the process. And actually now the probe doesn't know where to go because every single mineral patch is being used. Yeah, he needs to realize that's happening because uh, that, well, that's not too much, but it's still like way more than what you should ever have. Like, you have 16 probes, the, the two more should go into another base. Fake Oracle going towards the main. I hope he doesn't oh, use Oh, if Omo picks up these units, you could actually be in a little bit of trouble. I'm not sure where the Mothership oh, Core is. Uh, there should be a Mothership Core yeah. nearby. Cool little push it. Man, Darkness is playing pretty good. Yeah. I'm quite impressed. Yeah, like uh, just a weird timing. Just uh, taking the the Finnish player by, uh, by surprise a little bit there. And uh, now he needs to defend on two opposite sides in the main with the Prism and a little bit on the ramp. But he actually, yeah, he pulled back a little bit on that on the, the natural side of things. And now the Mothership Core is in position. 
photon overcharge getting yeah. used. I'm actually really impressed with how he's playing. It's a shame that uh, those probes were following that other probe, and I think that's yeah, still happening. Uh, that's really putting him behind a little bit. Other than that, he would not have been behind at all. And I really think he can be quite proud of the way that he has played so far. His blink is going to be a little bit later. But I don't mind moves out like this with the War Prism, because right now he's the one who's dictating the pace in the game. Or off the game, he's, you know, picking off a probe here and there as well, and he's forcing Wellmoot to stay at home while Wellmoot's probably like, hey, what the hell's going on? You know, I'm, I'm the one who's supposed to be attacking you, and I'm yeah. the one who's supposed to be finding openings. That's the thing. Like, Wellmu, every time he's in the, you know, the, the defender's uh, position, actually feels kind of bad about it. That's not his style at all. Like, he loves to, to go for all-out aggression. He loves to be in front. He, he loves to be in, a, in, a, in his opponent's face. That's how he plays StarCraft. They've never seen StarCraft well, as came out, StarCraft 2, that is. Like, he's always been that aggressive player. Double foot and overcharge being used against that double the depth drop, not dealing any damage, not losing a single probe, but also great micro from Darkness, not losing the prison. Nope. So, yeah. Uh, Walmus has to be a little bit careful with his harass. I mean, Blink is not done yet, but that's something we know. I don't think he could be totally sure about it. He's going to have to be very careful with his Immortals here. Both barriers are activated immediately and actually doing a lot of damage on these stalkers. Good pick. Oh, he killed his own stalker! Uh, right? That's all. Yeah, yeah, he did. That's a little bit sad for Darkness. Like, just lost a single stalker and uh, managed to save the two, uh, the two that were in the red health. But actually felt like uh, killing this one for himself. So uh, losing another stalker on this one, just a uh, you know a tiny micro mistake on this one, not going to be too costly. But that's a lot of mistakes that keeps happening. You know, the two probes and now the mm -hmm. stalker. He needs to avoid that. Maybe a little bit of nerves from Darkness too. Mm -hmm. I mean, Wellmo is running across the map. I definitely oh, think he's a tiny bit nervous. Yeah, that's a real shame. Those two probes could have been so useful at another base. But he's getting his own Robo Bay. Plus one is on the way. It's important as Darkness picks up on the fact that all these units are running across the map. Oh. And right now, now Fonka, he has no idea. No vision whatsoever. There's an hallucinated uh. Phoenix that, has go that is going from the left side. He, he also has an observer, but Maybe he can get the prism. He can he get the prism? Yeah. He can blink on top of it. That's actually, actually no. exactly what he's going to do. But he's going to lose four stalkers in the process. Yeah, I'm not sure if blinking was really necessary there. Yeah, now Wellmo is going to go for a forward blink as well. And he gets an immortal. The barrier being activated on the other immortal as well. This fight has become incredibly hectic. But I think Wellmo just has a little too much. Gee. G. Walmu gets the first win for Finland against a pretty mm. decent darkness, but yeah, probably you mentioned it. Like I said, blink. You were like, I'm yeah. not sure about it, mate. And actually, blinking in was a was a was a tough mistake because instantly four force fields mm. just uh, just come in and you lose a lot of units, and that, yeah. that's something you couldn't you couldn't afford. That was an interesting little moment because there's a lot of ways to look at it, right? Like the war prism is obviously a very important aspect of that push. If you just shoot at the prism while it's not in uh, power mode or shift mode, or mm -hmm. however you call it, then you, you can the warp in. Umbrella mode. Yeah, in the umbrella mode, and it, if you then shoot at it, you push the prism away, and that obviously stinks a little bit yeah. because then you give Wellman an alert. I think the best thing that he could have done there is move command slightly below the prism, then shoot at it, and then he could always blink backwards. But blinking forward is always incredibly risky, especially when there is a chance that there are a couple of sentries there as well. So even though Darkness lost that game, I am very positively impressed with the way that he played. Mm -hmm. Obviously a tiny bit nervous with uh, you know killing his own stalker and having a couple of probes yeah. on follow. But in the grand scheme of things, I like the way that he played. I like the early move out with the prism. I like the activity that he had on the other side of the map. Yeah. Uh, I did not feel that we were watching Wellmo, who was far superior to his opponent. No. Like, if they play again, I can easily so see it go the other way. So. Not bad by Darkness, but Wellmo doing what obviously we expect Wellmo to yeah, do. Yeah, Wellmo is ju is just a just a sick player. Like when you think about it, like even when even considering, like I would say for the last couple of years, he hasn't been that active. Like he used to be a great player mm -hmm. towards the middle of out of the swarm, Wings of Liberty too. Like he was that that guy that was everywhere. And he was a really results. solid and consistent WCS performer for he a while. He was uh, mm -hmm. during a out of the swarm era. Yeah, in the I Premier remember. League seasons. Yeah, so. he used to be like one of the last remaining protoses that. Yep. They were uh, with MC, obviously, because <laughs> MC was already uh, always there. But uh, yeah, I, I, I always enjoyed like the way Wellmu plays, and on this on this game, like even though he makes a little bit of mistakes, and probably uh, his opponent is slightly better than anticipated, you can tell like he's not losing focus at all. Like he's just playing his game. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did that. Maybe that wasn't the right idea. I'm gonna force field those units and then just finish the game. Like. It was yeah. kind of a close game, but also finished like super abruptly. 
you know? Yep, I mean, but that can be PvP, right? Like, there's yes. one mistake, one forward blink that he shouldn't have made. And it's slightly unfortunate for Darkness that he didn't see the army move out. It becomes incredibly difficult in PvP to defend when you have a bunch of units on the left side and you have the other units over here and then suddenly your enemy army's over here. Because it's very difficult to blink stalk a micro on two sides where your screen can actually not see your entire army. So basically, you have to all the way to the left and yeah. then at the same time, you have to cast abilities on the right side and you can obviously only look at one army at a time. So you'll never get optimum result, you know. Whether you are the son of stats and zest combined, oh, you're yeah. still going to lose a couple of uh, units there. It can never be perfect. So a little bit unfortunate, caught off guard, but still, um, yeah, Darkness is a play to remember, in my opinion. Like, I actually yeah. thought that looked really good. Yeah, he lacked just, uh, just a tiny bit of uh, map awareness. Like, mm -hmm. he needed to know that, that, that his army was actually uh, getting super close from his third base. He was just a tiny bit out of position with some units towards the left and some units towards his uh, natural. But in the end, yeah, seizing the opportunity, well moved that is, just taking that first game for himself. And that's a 1-0 lead for Finland. So one of the players from Chile... Half it's breed. actually going to be half breeds, so okay. maybe you can call, you can confirm it for us, but maybe the sub player because that's not the player we have as a third player for mm -hmm. uh, Chile. So probably the sub player here uh, coming in for Chile, half breed, and I've got it's going to be a Zerg player. Yeah, oh, I, okay. I was about to uh, to ask which uh, which race he played. So it's definitely a uh, mm. definitely the sub coming in uh, instead of uh, well either of the uh, other two. Gonna be playing Zerg, so PVZ for Welmu. Sounds about right. Like, Welmu yeah. doesn't have weaknesses. Like, he used to be super good at PvP. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about, like, King in the North, kid of PvP in the North, like, and Naniwa back in the days, obviously. Yep. But Welmu was also, uh, you know, uh, like, mm. around, around that, uh, that side to get that, that throne too. In PvZ, just an aggressive player that will, like, Resonating Glaive. Like, I think about yeah. Welmu, Resonating Glaive, killing some drones. And also a lot of interesting war prison pushes, right, with Immortals and sometimes Zealots. Even before we saw stats bust out bolts like that multiple uh -huh. times, Welmu was already doing that. I think Welmu is best performance of the year, but correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was Montreal, correct, where he made top eight, which I think was a lot better than a lot of people expected him to do. Uh, he was pretty convincing. Over there, and then in the end, he fell against True zero three. True just being through that tournament. I mean, you know, he was on a on a war path, a so to speak. Oh, yeah. He was an unstoppable force in that one, as uh, he pretty much just won all of his ZVPs that weekend with links and queens and a few more links, and that's about it. Yeah, that that was interesting to me because I actually thought that Welmu was doing well and even like better than expected, I guess. Mm -hmm. But then, eventually, faced True and yeah, looked. Looked silly, like everybody that played through this weekend. <laughs> like everybody looked silly. Oh, like, Wilmu is having such a great game, such a great matchup. I guess we're gonna cast this quarterfinal against Drew, and then you watch it, and then like half an hour later, it's over. Like okay, that's that's that sounds a little bit bad for Wilmu, but uh, keep in mind, he did he did make a like a, a tremendous uh, tremendous effort and a great performance at this tournament. He's been able to. Uh, to drop out some pretty cool games this year. Can he keep on going against Chile in the bottom side of Vani Risto Station as the Blue Protoss? This is Velmu. This is a very interesting opening from my fin. Is this some sort of a weird proxy? No, no, my Why is he double sc no, oh, Okay, I guess he was very worried about the proxy hatch. Over here on the top side of the map, we're looking at the main base of our Chilean Zerg. It is Halfbreed. Or Halfbreed. Not very familiar with him, Funka. I'd be lying if I said I was. So if you guys were wondering about the weird double scout we saw from Welmo, he sends out a probe immediately and then he sends out another probe to the low ground. I guess he wanted to make sure he wasn't playing against the proxy hatch link flood spinecrawler rush uh, that has been quite popular on Vani in the past. And as soon as this map got reintroduced re to the map pool, I scouted a couple zergs and I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And I was like, ha! It's this one. And it always takes you a couple of times to uh, go up against it before you truly know how to deal with it. It's a, it's a hard build, especially if you don't scout it, but Welmo want to make sure he wouldn't be surprised. Eh? Yeah, I remember the good old days of Vani where Zergs used to used to uh, build their second hatcheries anywhere but in that pocket area. Like, you either go for the, you know, the front expand as the first one to get that creep going, or you can get the gold, like Kevin knows where I'm going with this, or you can get the opponent's gold, you can do some uh, uh, proxy hatcheries as you mentioned. There's a lot of stuff to do, but mostly for time, 
no Zergs would, would build that, uh, that pocket expansion. That was kind of funny to see. But in this game, have Breed going to go, gonna go for a hatchery first on the uh, on the pocket expansion, gonna secure himself a third base, at least it looks like it. Mm -hmm. Probe comes back from Welmu, okay, you drop that third hatchery. Everything looks very standard up to this point from our Zerg. He's gonna be able to chase down this probe and he should be able to get it. He will get it. There's one thing that's very eager, Poke. it's like, oh, I'm so hungry. That's a probe. Nothing like some metal in the morning. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Do you think a probe would actually be tasty? No, I don't think Doesn't so. Like, they're really cute. Like, I think probes are cute, but I don't <laughs> think they're tasty, right? Well, it would be quite rough on your teeth, I think. <laughs> All okay. right, so we see the robotics facility being wiped in as well. So this is most likely, once again, going to be the Dark Templar wire prism opening that they can eventually morph into Archons. It's a build we've seen a couple of times today already. I really like the way that Patak dealt with it. I thought it was brilliant. He's like, you know what? If they're all doing it, then I'm just going to go for two base Roach push. Unfortunately, that did not happen. I've got a new piece of information, Roddy. I'm Half breed. Is killer? Is killer. Ah, okay. He, is. he just switched uh, switched names, and uh, I got it confirmed by our production right there. Thanks, Romy. That's not confusing at all. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Easy peasy, man. Like, okay, I'll breed, I guess. Well, Killer is, of course, a player that we are a lot more familiar with. Yes. He has participated in a lot of the Intel Extreme Mastery events in 2010, 2011, 2012. Back then, he disappeared for a while. Once upon a time, I even casted Killer versus Killer. And eventually... That's sick. <laughs> the uh, Korean Killer changed his name into Swagger. Arguably the worst nickname anybody has ever chosen. Even worse than mine, and mine is really bad. Swagger. Alright, so we're going to have a link drop here. This is always very good, especially if the Modish, of course, is out of position. And it seems like it is a little bit out of position. Oh, yeah. So I like this opening quite a bit by uh, Killer. Photon Overcharge being used in the front, which also means this. I'm not sure if there's going to be Photon Overcharge available here. Alright, and he's actually going to lose a lot of probes. Four go down at the moment, and... Actually, I thought it would be worse than yeah. four probes. I think the micro from Well was kind of nice. Zealot in position. Another photon overcharge getting used in the ramp. Like, I don't know that was necessary, I guess. Maybe it could have felt a little bit longer. We can see that he built another pylon in case that Zealot actually dies. Why says Prism? All right, three Dark Templars being wiped in for now, and that's going to be the fourth one. Dark Templars will be able to take care of a couple of these links as well. The big issue for uh, Killer is that I don't think he has a Roach Warren yet. And actually, that Sport Brothers a little bit late as well. If he yeah. jumps on the Sport, this is okay. going to be very, very ugly. Well, there are two Overseers morphing, but four Dark Templars kill hatcheries very, very fast. Yeah, that's no, a dead hatchery. No, 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 he's losing me. time on those what earnings. He's, he's actually greeting a little bit. Unless he like thinks that he can actually just kill the links right now. Oh, oh, he loses a DT. A little bit sloppy, I guess, but those DTs actually... He's making more DTs! Oh my god, Two I more love DTs it. and a Zealot! Shout out to McKenning, the five Dark Templar opening over here. He's gonna be able to not only kill the drones and the links, he will get the hatchery as well. And Welmo is probably like, well, that was awesome. I really enjoyed his opening. Yeah. I guess DTs are pretty good units, you know, <laughs> like, making work, like... Just you know. warp in more DTs right now, I D think the... D oh, okay, the, okay. the link on is getting a little high, and there are a couple of queens here in the mix as well. He's still able to pick up these four... Oh, no. he picked up a Zealot instead of really? a 4 DT. I thought I the think. Zealot died. I don't know, okay, yeah. there was... Uh, yeah, okay, six Dark Templars. Five, yeah, six Dark... Oh, five, no, sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so two DTs died, four are still alive. He's gonna be able to produce two Archons and uh, continue with the with the push. Actually, that Archon, no, not, never gonna die. I would have just liked to see him have in points. more Dark Templars here. Go for the nine Dark Templar opening. Easy. And that's a dead third hatch. Yeah. Ruddy. It's a disaster for Killer. Killer is really taking a beating, yeah, man. Yeah, Killer made too many links, I think. Like, opening up with a link drop, I think, on Vani is excellent. These queens are in a lot of trouble. Good War Prism Micro. I think this game is just about to end here, as these Zealots and these two Archons will not die. GG. Wow. Well moved. Not losing any time. That 4DT pressure into Archon drop actually finished the game. Just, you know, realizing that he could take mm -hmm. those engagements, actually take take out those units before the Overseer came in. Just didn't lose any time on the hatchery. He's like, yeah, I'm going to kill a little bit more Zerglings, mm -hmm. force you a little bit more units, and then, you know, 
building some more zealots, some more DTs. Like, I love the way uh, uh, Wellmood just handled this. It was a little strange that Killer opened up with mm. the amount of links that he did. I think opening up with the link drop on Vani, I think it's excellent. Yeah. I actually think it's very good because often when they open up with the Dark Templar opening, they'll send the Mothership Core towards the third base, which means that the natural is quite exposed. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing you have is a defensive weapon. But instead of making 8 or 12 links, he made like 22 links, which obviously slowed his economy down a lot. Then he lost a couple of links when he ran and passed the Dark Templars, and then the Spore just being a little bit too late. Well, you know, all these small things, they do really yeah. add up. And then Wilm was like, oh, cool, I can make six Dark Templar. Dark Templar. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, likes, he likes the, the, the rolling, rolling R's. R's. Yeah, that's something uh, about uh, Finnish people so speaking English. It's ca actually kind of funny well, to Well, so that means that Finland takes a very quick 2-0 lead in this nation war. And it also means that we're going to head over to a very small break. And after that, we'll be back with game number three between Chile and Finland. All right, everybody, welcome back to StarCraft II Nation Wars Season 4, the qualifiers that is happening today. We already went through a whole bunch of Nation Wars, yeah. and we've got a few more great ones coming up. For now, we're in the middle of Finland against Chile, and the next one is going to be it's PvP, correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the next player for, uh, for Chile is going to be Wing Yin. We'll, we'll try to pronounce it that way, and maybe we'll find a, a better way of, uh, of calling him during Could also uh, be during Wind Giant. Wind Giant? Yeah. Uh, where like works, where works well. A winning giant, wind giant. Ah, okay, okay. It could also be Wing Ian. Wing Ian. Wing Yan. Wing Yan. It's really hard, man. Like, yeah. I've never cast these games before. They should yeah. actually, uh, you know, uh, put the phonetics in the mm -hmm. bottom of their uh, their ID so we know exactly how, to, how we're supposed to pronounce it. Okay. In terms of vo uh, voting, you oh. guys uh, actually voted, 60% of you guys voted for Only Finland. Only 60? Yeah, I, I thought it would be, like, it started, <laughs> okay. It started with 100% against 0, I think, and then uh, transitioned into 60 against 40. And the reasoning being, uh, apparently, Ponf, the French caster, actually called everyone to vote for Chile because, I don't know, he feels like close to them or something. Okay. So he's like, yeah, vote for Chile. <laughs> so now it's 60 to 40. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's why it's a surprising result because what we've seen at the moment is that... It does not feel like a 60-40 so no, far. No, no. It it's feels like well moves in the driver's seat and... Uh, He's on a one-way train to victory. Perhaps another all-kill. We already today saw Cass having an all-kill. Mm -hmm. We know that Raynor had an all-kill. Ah, that's the one on I was the forgetting. Stream. Cass? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was like mm -hmm. trying to count the the all-kills that we had on the mainstream. And obviously, yeah, Cass was able to uh, all-kill Rush out. That was pretty cool. But yeah, I also one thought could uh, have this, uh, this opportunity today. I also thought that my all-kill against Czech Republic was pretty good. Oh, great all kill. Yeah, it was great solid, right? I mean, like, you know, Tomicus is pretty good Zerg, but sorry, mate. Like, nah. can't not, have not good enough. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> <laughs> of course, looking forward to seeing uh, the Netherlands in action. Unfortunately, not today, but we will see them in the main tournament. I'm so stoked to see my boys play. I'm going to be super biased, by the way, just so you know. Like, it's, just so you guys know normal. as well. It's normal. Like, remember last year with the UK and Clad the Lad? Yeah. That, that's going to happen with you, Thermal, when they play. Like, every single uh, player, actually, from the Netherlands because Roddy will be biased. It's okay. It's allowed. In the bottom left for Chile, it is Wingy. I can dig it. A PvP on Daybreak over here on the right top side. We're looking at the main base of the man who is uh, 2-0 so far. Probably wants to go for the RKO. It is Velmo. La Velmo. Such a nice guy too. Really, uh, really a cool guy to have around. It's no, uh, no Zugalian this year, correct? For yeah, Finland? I think he is. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought he. Last uh, time I checked the phone. Oh no, no. Uh, where, where, where? Is he? Yeah, he's here. He's oh, here. Okay. Well, Moose, Sarah, Zugalian. Okay, it's it's the exactly same the same lineup. <laughs> they actually did well last year because, and that's something I like about the Finnish lineup, is that they all have a, an opportunity to do something. You know, Serral, Welmu, probably considered as the best players in the in the in their country, but mm -hmm. last year Zugelion getting some some pretty decent wins and actually won against Stefano. Uh, Putting Stefano in a 0-4 record, if I remember correctly, last all, year. All that I remember was his celebration. It was the greatest one. And, and I just remember uh, Apollo being really, really confused. Like, this is not working out. Does he know he's not on camera? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, the best thing about it is you can actually only see half of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. 
That was, right. uh, uh, we, rec we recommend that we, uh, you go through all those uh, old clips from Nation Wall Street because we had a lot of fun with the interviews. Interviews that will be coming back after today because, as we mentioned, lots of games today. So we cut on everything that is added to, to the broadcast. But it will come back tomorrow with interviews for everybody because tomorrow we start with Group A of uh, Round of 16, not losing any time. What is in the main base? Is that a mothership core? Yeah, okay. I was about to say, I saw something fly <laughs> over Fog of War. Actually getting two kills already. Decent side there for Wellmo. Don't want to end up losing your mothership core, but he will not end up losing it. So he's being annoying with Sog. He's in the middle of the map and he got a decent scout off. Ooh, this could. What is this going to be? Robo? Cheeky target. No, target. Okay. Cheeky target. Double Cheeky doubles target. What? That's very early. All right. I don't mind it at all, by the way. I'm a very, very big Stargate fan in PvP, as everybody knows. Now, I wonder what this is going to be. This could obviously just be for Phoenixes, but it could also go crazy and maybe try to make something happen with Void Rays, because Void Rays are actually not as bad as they used to be, because now you can actually micro them. There is micro potential in the good old skill race. That, that seems like a drunken master kind of strategy too, like double target proxy. That's something you... <gasps> what? No, you can... He has, he has 25 probes. Funk, I'm done. I know nothing about this game. I'm he's done. On, he's on two gas and 25 workers and he has three targets. What the hell? What the, 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 the doesn't make any sense? In no universe does this make any sense. And now that those two targets I finished up, you're actually going to be building one unit. Oh, because he, he, he canceled. He realized he's oh, agreeing yeah. with me. <laughs> 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 he's like, man, triple targets sounded really good, but I have no gas. <laughs> It's like, if I I've got it. three targets, I can build like three units at the same time. That's kind of <laughs> sick. Well, actually, I don't have the money for it. Quick, oh cancel, cancel, cancel. I love it. Yeah, that, that was Oh, too no, much. it's getting touted no by... No way. Oh, no my God. No way. Oh. Imagine if he would have found a triple stargate. So he's going to find both stargates. Now, stalkers could potentially make their way over here, but that's going to make things a little bit awkward for Wellmo. Because what happens if your stalkers die against Void Rays? Right now, it's only two Void Rays. Uh, Wingian should have a couple of gateway units as well, correct? Uh, Wait, oh, Wellmo's going to go for Dark Shrine. That's very smart. Wellmo, yeah. I love it. Hello. Realizing that there is a very good chance there is no detection on the other side of the map. Look at that. Right now, he doesn't even have gas to start Void Ray number four. Ah. I like this opening a lot by Wellmo. Not only is he going to have Blink and a robotics facility, but now he also realizes, like, hey, if you go double Stargate, there's no way you've got a robot at home. And this hallucinated Phoenix will confirm this. Wellmo's playing well. Good scouting, good reaction, good strategy. But you know the thing with Wellmo is that he's probably the kind of guy that already tried those kind of strategy, considering like how much of a wonky product he can be sometimes, like the double target play. He actually tried to make it work, but... Probably, uh, probably lost against uh, DT follow-up. So now he knows what he has to do. And I like the keep centuries. in mind, like there's okay, three centuries actually make a whole lot, a whole lot of difference. But those void rays going to the to the I destroy everything uh, shielded uh, mode, and he needs to go back for a little bit. Wow, he actually gets the mothership core, and of course he's on all the photon overcharge. So he has to wait until photon overcharge has expired. Unfortunately, prismatic alignment won't be live anymore. And I know this sounds and looks exciting, guys, but it's actually not all that exciting because there is no detection for our Chilean Protoss, and he's actually not even winning this fight either. That's going to make no. it even worse. He's going to lose the stock. There's good micro by Welmo. Uh, Welmo does not only have a worker lead and shut this attack down, he's also going to be able to warp in a couple of Dark Templars on the other side of the map with this warp rhythm. And the yeah. moment that these DTs show up, that's all she wrote. One oh. DT, two DTs <laughs> into GG. Uh, yeah, indeed, that's all she wrote. Will we see a GG instantly? We will. GG, well moved. Not losing any time. As you mentioned, one DT to the main, one DT to the natural base. You don't have detection, mate. I know it. I've seen your double target void ray proxy. I, yeah, I, I, no still, I still like it. You know, even though it failed, right? But we shouldn't be too result oriented over here at Nation Wars. Of course. Like an A for effort. I thought the build was awesome. He got a little carried away with the triple star yeah. gate. You know, it's probably better to. <laughs> Maybe at least go up to three gases before you even think about double Stargate because yeah, it's yeah. very hard to support double Stargate with only two gases. But if it wouldn't have been scouted, you know, there's a good chance it's going to be Observer, then maybe War Prism or Observer Immortal mm -hmm. War Prism. Maybe he's going to be a little bit lower on the stock account. And there is a chance that you're able to surprise a player like Welmo, uh, even though it would be hard, but 
I mean, gotta give kudos to Walmu there. He was really on the money with everything he did on daybreak. Oh yeah, he did, he did super well in this game, getting three wins already for Finland, and about to make it another all kill if he can get another win against either Darkness, Halfbreen, or Wingian. So Halfbreen, remember, uh, is killer in the in this lineup. So he probably just changed idea but mm -hmm. didn't didn't tell us in advance to be honest i would like to see darkness man i really felt that if i he look at the three games yeah. the darkness had by far the best shot i agree and he got himself by far in the best position and i know it still looked like a one-sided game in the end but that is really being result oriented then because i felt he put up a good fight got himself in a nice position and you know he was actually being the aggressor and kept Walmo on his side of the map for a little mm -hmm. bit I would like to see darkness. But yeah, I agree with you on this one. The, mm. the, 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 what would he, what we would anticipate is uh, probably getting killer a little bit, uh, like revived, mm. because that's the player that we know the best. But yeah. I, I agree with you that uh, darkness did better, in my opinion. He was the one that actually uh, gave a run for his money to uh, Wellmu and just lost because of uh, you know a misinformation uh, about the positioning of the uh, of his opponent's mm. army. So. Uh, uh, Could of go course. for a second game between those two. Mm -hmm. The argument you can make for Killer is that if Killer would have just stopped at 10 links and then would have been droning up behind it, had a couple links at home and the spore would have been a little bit faster, there's a good chance that his link drop actually does a little bit of damage. Yeah, it is going to be Killer. Uh, so maybe Killer is like, all right, you know, I made a big mistake. The spore was too late, made a few too many links. I can do better if you give me another shot. Well, bring it on, Funka. We'll see. We'll see. We'll get a rematch between those two. So it's going to be a PVZ and remember that game. You mentioned, like, the way you said it, I was like, well... If I had less links but more drones and a slightly earlier uh, sport, and that's 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 starting to be a little bit more. Like he was kind of far. Like as you mentioned, I think uh, he wasn't as close as uh, uh, the Protoss player did uh, in the PvP in the mm -hmm. beginning. So I would have rather uh, saw a, a, another PvP. But this time is going to be a PvZ again on Overgrowth. This time. Okay. So maybe he's got a special build. I mean, Killer has always been a pretty aggressive Zerk. This map has gold base. Mm -hmm. This is also a map where link drops are absolutely not bad because this is definitely a map where you want to have your mothership core often at the third base if you want to expand between 445 and 515 as a Protoss player. So maybe there is a small opening for another 8 to 10 link drop into the main. And maybe then be uh, safer at home. We'll see. I I'm curious. I hope for Killer that he's able to put up a good fight because obviously we do know Killer as a very strong Zerg traditionally. Yeah. Yeah, how about a uh, proxy hatchery? Like we've seen yeah. Walmu trying to uh, figure out if there was a proxy hatchery on a uh, on Vani, and I feel like Overgrowth could be a map that you could go for proxy hatcheries. We've seen it in the past, but uh, let's see. Let's introduce those players. He's about to make an all kill. If he gets that victory, it's going to be a definite all kill for Finland playing as Brodos in the blue. This is Valmu. Very good so far. I would say better with every game that he's played. Uh, yeah. You know, first game was looked a tiny bit shaky. Second game was better, and our third game was pretty much flawless from start to finish. The mothership core scout, the oracle scout, the blink stalker micro with the dark templar follow up. Everything that Walmo did in the last game was perfect. Let's see how he's going to do in game four against this man spawning in the left bottom side, shown as half breed, but we know him better as killer been around for a long time, definitely a yeah. very old school Starcraft 2 player already. Yeah, and he will need to kill Walamu in this game if he wants to uh, survive in this nation wars and uh, if he wants uh, Chile to make it to the round of 16. It seems, it seems tough, like, to be honest. Yes. Already beating Welmu is going to be a huge challenge, but considering we've got Zugeliang, who's not bad at all in CVZ, he showed it in the, in the past, but also uh, against uh, Serral, so he will have like a super, super tough matchups, and yeah, the wall is actually on the right side this time. The opening is on yeah, the right side. Not totally on the right, like it could be worse, right, if you would have put the ah, gateway one more oh, yeah, spot yeah, okay. to the left. But yeah, this is still, but I still find this tiny bit of weight of an opening, because now he's going to have a double pile on the wall. Because normally you wall off with two pylons, but you don't want to have them next to each other. Because then if main links connect, you lose everything. You know, you don't just lose one pylon, but you lose both. So kind of a strange wall off, but we'll see. Maybe he's going to build a gateway, gateway or, a back, yeah. or a twilight behind it. Yeah, so it's only a single pylon wall, and then it does make sense. Everyone likes to wall off in different ways, right? That's the beauty of Protoss. It's a little bit of a Bob the Builder. It's like, let's Bob the Builder. Yeah, let's play Sim City and build our own little town. I love SimCity. Sometimes it works out great, and sometimes you have a SES wall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Chrono boosting the, uh, the Adept for now. 
not gonna remove the warp gate technology, not at all. Gonna, gonna go for the uh, speed link on the other side of the map. Half breed that is, gonna go for this, and a third archery coming in. No scouts whatsoever for now from Wellm, just playing in the dark, just waiting for that first adept to cross the map. Gonna get that uh, some. Uh, oh, he actually scouted with a probe around here. But you know what would be very annoying? Whenever you have wall offs like this, if your opponent would have opened up with six to eight links and ran them across the map, there is a good chance your single adept will miss it because obviously adepts are pretty blind in this day and age. Then these links can just run in. It becomes very annoying already. I think he went for the uh, the ugly wall once again. I think I can see uh, another gateway being put down. Actually, double gateway. Oh, double gateway robo. robo. The, the big downside of walls like this is like, yeah, it's pretty solid against a bailing bust, obviously, even though there is an Artolsis pilot for now. But the bad thing is, if this game goes on for a, you know a long time and eventually you go up to three or four bases, there is so much surface area for links to just jump on top of your robotics facility, yeah. and having such an expensive building that exposed is just something that, in general, Protoss players will not recommend you to do. But you know, who am I to criticize Wellamu as well? Yeah. Well. Unless the robot dies, then I was totally right. <laughs> <laughs> he will actually tell you, well, he lost a lot of time to, you know, killing that robo, and in this time, I actually killed 25. No, drones. only TLO would say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was going there. Uh, two more gateways, making it four, total of four with the Twilight Council and a Dark Shrine. It's going to be the infamous Prism Drop with the DTs into Archons in the end, and that's how he killed Killer earlier today yeah, so that should not happen again this time we do have yeah, a road warrant that's about to finish up uh, of course you know defense is still going to be very important because knowing that something is coming is one thing but if you still end up losing five six seven drones or you make too many links too many roaches uh, it can still get ugly very quickly but i do believe that killer is good enough to deal with this build if he knows that it's coming still no spore though the overseer is getting morphed on the second base is yeah, it gonna be enough time. It's like kind of over, risky the he, way is that he's he moving. Uh, he will. Uh, he overseer is out of position, and it's a slow overseer. It's gonna take some damage once again. Maybe lose some drones, <laughs> lose some HP. Definitely on the fourth. It's uh, a trap. He's gonna go for the prism. He's actually gonna work on that prism. Now the queen should really focus on the prism all the time. He was able to do. I think if he would have moved the queens more to the right side, yeah, there is a small chance that the links can actually uh, pick up a couple of these dark templars, or the prism would take crazy amounts of damage. It's a risky way. The way that Killer is doing uh, dealing with this, it's kind of risky because if Wilma would have also sent one dark templar into the natural, then you're looking at a very ugly situation very quick. I do love this having a couple of links on the other side of the map. Delaying this expand by a good 20 or 30 seconds by picking up that probe. Cheeky, cheeky leans here. Just, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, delaying all of this. Six roaches and the speed overload. So setting up probably for some drops in the future and getting this overseer with a little bit more speed too. Yeah, strange actually to get speed overloads in this phase in the game. Yeah, it's I a little feel. late. Yeah. Um, I agree. We'll see what he decides to do with it. Oh man, I love this as well. Dropping a little bit of creep. It's not as annoying as it was in Heart of the Swarm. As creep does disappear a lot faster in Legacy. But it's all these small things. Look at this. It's past six minute mark. Mm -hmm. So it's safe to say that this is already going so much better for Killer than it went on Vani. I like this actually. He's actually playing so much better. He's Nothing wrong with it. He does have to worry about an attack. I mean, we know these kind of stats, attacks, I like to yeah. call them. Uh -huh. Get a couple of Immortals, get a couple Sentries, and then suddenly you have to worry about 7 or 8 gate. Maybe that's why Killer is making that many units. But Wellmu did not stop at 46 or 48 probes. No. Wellmu actually really wanted to go up to three bases. Oh my god, he's that's like, something man. that doesn't happen every day. Yeah, he's like, man, I really did not want to all in you. But you almost leave me no choice. Now Killer is going to be the aggressive one. He's going to get a couple of Ravages as well. He's going to be careful that these Ravages don't get picked off yeah. by these two Archons. Oh, the Prism. The Prism is in a bad spot. He will need to, those, uh, those Archons to uh, be part of the fight. Nice sets of force fields. A lot of Roaches getting trapped. And the double Photon of a chart dealing a lot of damage. But those Archons still not getting used. Not, uh, and the Prism not being used to uh, deal some damage at the opposite side of the map. I guess he doesn't want it. Maybe he can get those Ravager heads? Yeah, absolutely. I think he can. Let's see if these balls can connect with anything. No more Photon Overcharge available. I think that's the last one. That, no, actually, he has one more. Damn it. Photos never run out of Photon Overcharge, do they? <laughs> <laughs> but that pilot <laughs> was very exposed. But he will be able to cast one more, though. 
And so far it's a decent attack by Kilo, but his money's starting to get a little bit high. Finally, the Arkham Burger drop. Good pick up there by Wellmo. Yeah, amazing pick up, but he also loses the Prism at the same time with the Stalker inside. And a lot of Immortals actually dealing a lot of damage to those Roaches and Ravagers. Cor uh, corrosive Bar connecting a little bit with some Stalkers, and the Muzzle Ship Core is in the red, but he's going to lose a lot of units. And 64 probes against 56 drones. This is not looking too good for a killer, I think. But if he saves those Ravages, and I don't mind yeah. it that much, because he has money in the bank, he, so he could technically get more stuff behind this. Yeah. And he was able to get both Archons. There was a small moment there where both Archons were at like 20 HP. Archons always look healthy because of their amazing amount of shields. And if the shields disappear, it still looks like they've got a green health bar. But Killer identified immediately like, hey, these two Archons are low on HP. Turned around and he got the kill. And killing two Archons, I think it's very nice. He also got the Prism with Corrosive Ball. So, I mean, it wasn't maybe everything that he hoped for, but it wasn't terrible. Yeah, he's not out of the game at all, uh, in my opinion. He, de he did deal a little bit of damage, got the Prism, got the Archons, as you mentioned. So resetted the count of really super expensive units. I think he also killed an Immortal, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice. Like, he could have got super shut down. Like, you lose everything, you don't achieve anything. Another Prism, fourth base, Immortal plus two, and Blink Stalker is opening every single path. We could get a couple of Bailing drops now. Uh, why not, true. right? I mean, he's yeah. got Evolution Chambers, he's getting Bailing speed, he has plus one as well. So I wouldn't mind seeing a couple banelings being dropped at all. Maybe just three banes and then two links to finish off the low HP probes. Wellmo is once again going to try to be annoying with a war prism on the other side of the map. We saw a sim, wow, 25 banelings. That's, That's a, a lot of banelings. As would you say, would say? No, no, no. It does would say so many. So many. I think that's like that only qualifies as like 40 plus, right? Yeah. I yeah. tried to get it out of Artosis and I am going. I was Artosis. Look at the production that he's like. What? I was like. Look at the amount of banings. He's like, yeah. yeah. I was like, come on, <laughs> give it to me. Give He's like, so many banings. I was like, thank you, Dan. That's, <laughs> that's all I wanted to hear one time. One time. Okay, the, trans the, the transitioning probes actually are going to get picked off. And those banings, that's some amazing connection. The force field is actually butchering up this defense quite a bit. Those immortals, sentries and stalkers are getting evaporated. And that's wow. really, really, really good four killer right there. Yeah, that actually looks incredibly good. Photon Overcharge was a little bit late to the party. There are still two Immortals alive. Absolutely zero splits were given by Welbu in this entire defense. All the sentries just ate those banes. And this is actually starting to look a lot more dicey than I think it should have. He does have Blink though. Uh, but man... <laughs> Okay, the killed overseer getting, uh, getting killed. Some DTs walked in the main. Actually, just one. The Queen doing uh, doing his job, but he's going to lose that fourth base. And as you mentioned, also, I think that's the Mothership Core that just died. Yeah, I guess. He, 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 he was trying to micro the counterattack quite a bit. That that blink was super dangerous by, uh, by Wong, who is actually going to be fine with it. Just losing one Stalker. Oh, the Spine does survive in the end. I mean, there were plenty of units anyway. Good wraparound with a couple of the links. One Immortal does get picked off immediately. The Overseer's... Yeah, I do like the fact that there is a cannon there. The cannon may actually save Wellmo there a little bit because he really didn't have that much DPS in his army. I mean, it's 40 army supply against 58. It's 59 probes against 53. The biggest problem for Wellmo is that his main base is obviously quite mined out. Mm -hmm. He does have plus two. But that looked... Uh, this game has turned into a little bit of a clown fiesta. Cause yeah. I, I mean, like weird. the defense on the fourth base by Wellmo was uh, quite, a, quite the fail, I would say. Like, he had... An amazing amount of force field, and that's yeah. the only thing you need against the 25 banelings. But as you said, no splits given, <laughs> and no force field either. Actually, there was a little bit of holes in those force fields, and uh, yeah, um, our friend Killer right there just uh, took advantage of it. And uh, uh. now it seems like a more even game than ever before. Three drones are gonna go down to that DT, but he's probably gonna probably gonna die for it. Mm -hmm. But I, I still like this move. Uh, this forces Killer to stay back, forces Killer to come over here in the right bottom side. Five drones in the end, so this single Dark Templar was absolutely worth it. Uh, Neo Prism is on the way now as well, and Wellmo is slowly but steady. He's gonna be able to resecure his fourth base. But yeah, the next defense is gonna have to be a little bit better. We know that Wellmo is absolutely capable of better. Maybe he was looking at his prism, maybe he was super confident that his yeah. force fields were good. And he's like, alright, I dropped a couple force fields, let's take a look at my war prism, send it to the main. And then suddenly he probably looked back at his army, he's like, oh my god, all my sentries died. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. I think you are right on the money on this one. I think he felt like his force fields were good enough and uh, tried to look at his uh, harassment at the opposite side of the map. That cost him a lot. 
Oh. And uh, I guess it's take two. Roach Ravagers and Force Baby Day once again. All the ball of sentries getting evaporated. Oh What's going on? Well, who doesn't want to do the old kill apparently on this one? Because Killer is looking amazingly well right there with double the army supply. He's gonna go for that fourth base one once again. Yeah, this is going to be incredibly difficult now. That Archon gets picked up there as well by a good Corrosive Bow. This fourth base will fall again. The Mothership Core does not die against Corrosive Bow, but. Wellmo's army is suddenly looking a lot smaller. How many sentries have died in this game? Oh, Can yeah. we take a look at that? Because I feel like 22 Wait. sentries have died. I mean, that's a lot of gas. You that's know? A lot I would of like gas. to do the math, but I can't. Ha, just kidding. It's 2200. 2 yeah. yeah. I know that was a joke. Yeah. I just I want know. to I make know. myself look I stupid. <laughs> 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 no, but I mean, it's ridiculous. He's getting a few more sentries. I feel terrible for those sentries. Oh, this is a slow weapon sentry. Look. More slow. Oh, no. Okay. 23rd and 24th century. Actually, not even that. Whoa. Okay, the Mothership Core is actually going to go down, but... Uh, with plus three Blink Stalkers and no Hive yet. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is starting to look really, really, really bad for Welmo. But Protoss is capable of making magic happen. That's a yeah. strange timing on that Hydro then, or is it just me? Oh, yeah. I don't really know what it's supposed to be. <laughs> like, maybe he anticipates... I, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't really explain that move actually. I, I was trying to, but I don't right. think that's a good idea. Yo. Take three. Once again, a hole in the force field. Actually, there's so yeah. many ravagers that oh he's gonna God. get those force field out of the out of the picture. And even though those link stalkers and immortals are doing pretty well against those ravagers, I think the numbers are too much, Roddy. Yeah, there is too much swarm over here. Killer is gonna get a point on the board for Chile as the last Protoss units will die. These immortals fall. More sentries died. And GG Killer shows us that we were wrong, Dalton Hing, uh, doubting him as the revival player as he takes out Wilma here on Overgrove. He still has a, a huge mountain to climb, looking at Xugalian, looking at Cero, and a potential revive of either Cero or Wilma mm -hmm. if he wants to win this entire thing. But at least he played a very good game there. Yeah, he did. Uh, a little bit helped by, uh, I would say, yeah. like the lack of force fields and splitting by Wellmu, but uh, did have like a, a way better game plan, handled the uh, mm -hmm. the original aggression way better too. Yeah. The second time that Wellmu lost all his sentries, like I can't blame him that much because I really think we should rather focus on the great attack by Killer there because he was showing a lot yeah. of units on the right side and then suddenly he's like, surprise, here are my Banelings coming from the left. So I can understand that that happens, you know, that kind of stuff can happen. But I really felt the first time that hold at the fourth base from Wellmo. Uh, I think he could have done a lot better there. The force tools could have been better. Mothership Core could have been uh, out there to just, well, okay, uh, you know, there. support the army a little bit better. And even after the sentries died, I even felt like he just did not try yeah. to split his immortals or the stalkers at all. Yeah, ate a lot of bile, yeah. lots more, a lot more banelings on the stalkers. And as you mentioned, he had the blink technology available. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's also kind of sad for, from Wellmu's perspective because if he holds that fourth base, that yeah. game is 100% over. Yeah, with the upgrade advantages that he had and the lack of tech, to some degree, we can say, from mm -hmm. on the other side of the map for Killer. Either way, we are going to get ready for a ZVZ. But of course, after two maps, we always had to a very small break. And after that, we'll be back with map number five between Finland and Chile. Welcome back everybody to the StarCraft 2 Nation War Season 4 where we are here on day one with the qualifiers. We're in the middle of our fifth best of seven of the day, I believe. It's between Finland and Chile. Score is 3-1. Mm -hmm. And our next player for Finland is the man, the master of all celebrations, oh, yeah. Zugalian. The half... Uh have to have filmed the celebration, I should say. Like, <laughs> really, if you didn't see it, I recommend that you go uh, and uh, find it on the internet, probably on YouTube. Uh, SC2HL, I think, had a, a pretty cool, uh, uh, a pretty cool featuring of all the great <laughs> interviews from uh, from Nation War Three. There was a lot yeah. of good interviews last I year. I think tomorrow we might show a couple of the <coughs> highlights as well that we had at uh, Season 3. And I'm pretty sure that Mr. Zugaliang, his celebration, <laughs> made it in. Unfortunately for him, there won't be any post-game interviews today if he's able to close out this best of seven. He's a very strong, I would say, well, yeah, he's definitely a very good Zerg player. I mean, he's not absolute 
upper class Euro, but like right below. You know, yeah. he's a guy that can hover around rank 30, rank 20, Grand Master League. Mm -hmm. So these guys are, you know, it's going to be very tough for Killer. That's basically yeah, where yeah. I'm going with the story. Uh, obviously, it's like I, I think uh, every single player from the Finnish lineup is actually going to be super hard to control uh, to uh, like to defeat from either of uh, Chilean players. But here, the only remaining player from Chile. He's in the bottom right, and he plays Zerg, he's in the red. This is Killer, or Halfbreed. Or both. Or both. A Halfbreed Killer. No. That actually sounds better than a Halfbreed. <laughs> Over here on the a left bottom killer. side, we're looking at the main base of our Finnish Zerg. It is Zugaliang. Very nice guy. I think he, uh, he's been uh, watching all the games early today. He's been tweeting quite a bit at us as well. He's feeling it. He's uh, he's excited. I think he had a lot of fun. I think a lot of the players that participated in Nation Wars last year just really enjoyed the competition. Like obviously, it's a very serious competition. The prize pool went up by thirteen thousand dollars. It was seventeen thousand dollars for season three. This year, it's thirty thousand dollars. So that's amazing. Of course, huge shout out to O Gaming and Blizzard for making this possible. Thank you very much. Yeah. But. Um, you know, uh, it's also about fun, right? It's about it pride is. of your nation. It's about just having a good time and just being... It's a real community event, I feel. It's a little similar to Home Story Cup. That, that, that was the main idea behind the tournament when we started it. Uh, originally with Season 1 and Season 2 was to uh, to, to get the community just to, uh, to enjoy themselves and uh, have a great time. And the fact that we decided to have the community vote the player in is that you, you will create that kind of relationship with it, between the players playing and uh, and uh, the people watching because they actually voted for those guys and wanted them to succeed or, voted, or wanted them just to be you know to be in the spotlight and discover all those guys and that's something that happens every single season and uh, as you mentioned Zugaliang was somebody that was uh, quite vocal on social media on how much fun he had uh, during uh, during Nation War so it's a it's a real treat to see him play once again can he uh, close it for his country for Finland here leading 3 to 1 against Chile and actually gonna go for a super quick watch one yeah. in this game against the bailing nest of mm -hmm. Killer. He is uh, kind of pulling a Betrayers over here, right? He's skipping uh -huh. Link Speed, going straight into Roach Warren, has no Bailing Nest, obviously. Uh, while Killer is playing a, a much more normal style. Like, I don't mind this opening that we saw from Betrayers on a map like Echo and stuff. I think on Warren is a little bit risky. The double Queen could be a small giveaway. This Overlord will get picked off, though, so that's a nice little start here for our Finnish Zerg. Let's see how many Roaches he will make. Are these just going to be some safety Roaches? He's supply block for now, but he just has a single overload on the way, so I think this is going to be it. And he's even getting a defensive spine. Yeah. He's pretty worried about potential aggression here from Killer. Yeah, I guess like uh, skipping link speed on this map is actually a little bit more of a gamble than what we've yeah. seen before because of the wide, uh, the wide opening towards the natural. As we can see, the ramp is super wide and it's going to be hard to maneuver around those Zerglings and Banelings, but the Roaches, they're already out and they're just shutting down this aggression really fast at the moment. Uh, I think Killer is just going to use these links as a distraction and maybe try to connect the Banes into the mineral line, but then, then on second thought he's like, nah, I really have no faith Zerglings in this in attack at all. Okay, oh, he could hide a couple of Zerglings, maybe more of these into Banelings. A double Baneling attack, let's go. I'm down. Can I get <laughs> he's it? actually going to go for it, Killer. Uh, listening to you right there and wants to uh, to make you proud, so he's gonna go for that uh, attack from the north and the south at the same time. Did, did Zugle Yang well? The did, he? Uh, did he forget about I it? I think it's more, okay. He's going to spot it now and he should be able to snipe at least one bane, but there is a good chance that the other banes no, no. will not connect. Well, he has a couple of links. Oh, <laughs> that's actually so sneaky. Yeah. If these two bane, uh, Zerglings morph into banes and then blow up nine drones. I mean, the best thing I've ever seen. Getting some banelings inside the main of your opponent is already super cheeky, but when you do it in a in two sequence fan fiction baneling picnic. <laughs> what, what do you think they talk about? I know blowing up stuff. Yeah, <laughs> sounds about right. Okay, those banelings are gonna be. <laughs> I can hear the French stream, which is which is going like. Aww. Aww. Oh, everybody is just. Sad I almost right felt there. that Zugli Yang wanted him to morph those links into banes as well. And it seems like it. Like both times, he just thought about it. Like because there's no way he didn't see those zerglings coming in because we've seen the micro on his drone to not lose to the first couple of zerglings in his main. So.
Just a good defense, like good uh, good start for Zugelian. Like he has 77 supply against the 60 of his opponent. His uh, lair is already finished up, so Roach speed coming in and plus one attack with the third base in the, on the way. Lots of Roaches already on the field. I'm liking Zugelian's position, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm more than liking it. I'm absolutely loving it. Loving I really it. feel that he uh, got effortlessly very far ahead in this matchup. Obviously, skipping link speed and bane link speed can be a little bit risky, but he identified uh, how many links he was up against. He was able to pick off these banes as well. He didn't have to worry about the banes connecting to the drones in the mineral line, in the natural. And the supplies kind of tell the tale of this game right now. 107 against 68. I mean, that's kind of insane. Uh, look at the uh, yeah. army advantage that he has created for himself this is already. Terrible for uh, for uh, yeah. killer right there. He's down in uh, every way. He's gonna oh. try to drop the spire, but no, this is no, something no. that we have seen so often, where one player is gonna try to rush out the spire, and the other Zerg player is like, no, nah, plus one missile tax is finishing up. Road speed is done. I am going to run across the map, and I am going to kill a lot of drones. I may not kill you here. I may do actually, but. Even if I don't, I'm going to be able to absolutely cripple your economy yeah. and your Mudas are not going to be able to even up this game. Easy pickup for, uh, for Zuga Young right there. Getting that third hatchery, maybe going to go even further. Get the drone. Is he going to go for it? He's yeah, got I mean, like way more roaches and he's actually going to go for it. And those four banelings, I hope they had a good picnic because their, their life is over and there's way too many roaches. GG, Zugelian takes it for Finland. And that was an easy and quick victory for our Finnish player. He's showing us that he is ready for Nation War Season 4 oh, yeah. as Finland qualifies for the main event as well. And I think that's very nice for them, knowing that they have not just Saru and Bomo, but Zigul Yang is really here to play as well. I know that he's been playing Love Ladder in the past. I wasn't sure how active he's been lately, but this looked as good as it could be for yeah. him. I mean, he only played a single map, but I think this was flawless. Flawless early game defense, just great execution of his build and excellent game sense attacking yeah. right before the Aspire. I mean, what more can you ask for? Yeah, I agree totally with you. Like, that was a stellar game from Zuge Young. Didn't have mm -hmm. to uh, go towards like a late game situation or anything. He seized the opportunity. Like, he killed the third hatchery. And as we mentioned, that like with no defense whatsoever on the third hatchery, we could have thought maybe Zuge Young is going to pull back. It's like, no. Actually, this game is over. Let me go back to practicing for those next games because I know this game is mine to take. And now, with this victory, Zugelion qualifies Finland for the round of 16. Congratulations to them. Uh, great nation last year yeah. and already a great nation in Nation Wars 4. Didn't lose that much time to yeah. uh, get into the round of 16. Finland is not one of the countries I immediately think of for top four or even top six, but they're definitely right behind it, right? Uh, Finland is a dangerous outsider and it really depends on the show of Cero. If Cero can be as good, I think, as he was last year, yeah. then these guys are here to play and yeah. there's a good chance they actually break into the top four. Yeah, top eight, top four would actually mm. be uh, something, uh, you know, uh, probable mm. for a team with a, with a Cero on point and yeah. a well, well move like, always performs. Like, that's the crazy thing about him. Like, yeah. I don't see him as a guy, like, even, uh, uh, like, if he plays against, like, a top Korean, maybe he will drop a map instantly, but usually you send well move first, you break everybody's spirit because it's going to be cheesing you, he's going to be attacking you everywhere, get a, lo a couple of victories, and then you've got Serol that can play huge macro games, and Zugelian that showed that he was a ZVZ expert, so yeah. really well-rounded team. Absolutely. Uh, I think one of the dangerous outsiders for Nation War Season 4. Yeah. Fonka, I know you're already excited. As you guys can see, Fonka is like starting to talk a little bit faster, and that's of course because France is up next. They will go up against Vietnam. You guys can vote, hashtag Fra win on Twitter, or hashtag VM no, VNM win. VNM. VMN would be very <laughs> weird. How would you spell Vietnam? No, VMN. VMN. No, that just no. doesn't work. Doesn't work. No. Not at all. VNM win. Mm -hmm. I have the feeling that a lot of votes will go towards your beautiful country. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. No idea who's going to start four fronts, but that's going to be up next. And of course, after that, it's going to be the icing on the cake for the qualifiers, that is, with the UK versus USA. I think that's going to be an absolute uh, fantastic nation war. Yeah. I'm super pumped for that one. A potential of the Muslim versus Natanius. Oh. Huh? I guess uh, it would, be, would be great. Yeah, it would be. It would be. It would be super indeed. Like uh, a, a really great matchup coming in. That's gonna be the last one of the night. But before, as you've seen, it's gonna be France versus Vietnam. But for now, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, yeah, most important match of the day. France is gonna come up against Vietnam. Don't go anywhere.